You were actually one of the early adopters of OnlyFans. Um, did you have faith that the platform was going to end up being as profitable as it has been? Um, cause I gotta say, like, I remember when OnlyFans first came along, I joined it just because I didn't want anyone else to take my name, yeah. but I was like, this site ain't going to go anywhere. This is some janky ass shit. And I was very wrong about that. <laughs> so how did you feel? Like, did you, did you see potential where other people did not? I think somebody told me at one point that because myself, Asa, Kira and Sophie D were like some of the first girls to venture onto OnlyFans. And Somebody told me that Asa Kira had her notifications on for every time she had a new subscriber, and that yes, that oh my day, god, it was so annoying. And that that day they had like eight, she had like eight hundred or something things going on. So right from the get go, I knew that OnlyFans could potentially be a big deal, but I didn't know if it was going to be for me because I had been gone for so long, etc. Um, but I saw that it was just like easy to use. And, you know, prior to leaving for a break, I had NatashaNice.com, which was operated by Puba. And it was just such a an uh, older, you know, kind of website structure that there's like a million distractions on the screen. And, and then it asks you like, hey, do you want to subscribe? And so it was just harder to manage. And then OnlyFans is just like, do you like these tits? Subscribe now, you know? <laughs> the simple, let's keep it simple, people. <laughs> keep it really simple, which I didn't have the foresight or the knowledge to be like, oh, this is going to be big. But mm -hmm. I just made it. And then like sometime later, I opened it and I had a nice paycheck in there and I hadn't done shit with it. I hadn't even been promoting it. So I was like, okay, this, this could be good, you know? And especially because I wasn't... Yeah in LA so I had no other ventures going on when I was home yeah you still actually shoot for studios um so what is it about like mainstream porn that keeps you coming back when so many performers are now only shooting their own content I'm afraid of the legal landscape of content creation I just feel like because of what Pornhub is going through and just what all the content creation sites are going through having to prove legitimacy and age verification that, you know, any day now they could take it down forever or for a while. And I don't want, um, I don't want to be kind of left in that situation where I have a shit ton of money that I can no longer re rely on. So I think I'm just scared. <laughs> so I, I stick with mainstream porn cause it's a little safer. It's like diversifying. Polio, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. And look, like, I mean, I think there's there's a difference between scared and just like being wise and being prepared and not putting all of your eggs in one basket, which I think is something that smart people do. Because you're right. I mean, we've already seen this, right? We saw, was it last year or was it the year before? I'm like losing track of time where OnlyFans did for like a week go like we're kicking all the sex work sex workers off the platform and then everyone freaked out and they're like yeah. oh just kidding we're gonna lose all our money and then they came back yeah. um so so yeah i mean you're right like you never know what's gonna happen and there's definitely a lot of chatter about visa and mastercard and their regulations and becoming more and more strict and then also, I mean, you know, working for the bigger brands does keep your name out there and I would imagine helps like garner new fans and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, it does. It's, I don't know. It must be different for different groups of men, different groups of viewers, because sometimes I'll hop on my webcam and like 20 dudes are like, are you still performing? And I'm like, dude, I have like four new scenes out right now. Like, are they not being, you know, circulated through the internet? So um, I don't know how much it keeps my name out there. I've kind of had my eye on like some girls who retired a while ago and I see how long it takes for them to drop down into the rankings when they're uh, a big deal. And it takes a while. So I think like years, 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 like eight, nine, 10 years. Um, so I think that if I wanted to quit mainstream, I could, I wouldn't suffer right away. I definitely have time to bounce into something new. Um, but it's just kind of like what I know. And I think a part of me just really wants like MILF performer of the year. <laughs> just, oh. uh, it's, it's, um, kind of vain, but, um, 
I don't know. I like owe it to myself to go for it. Yeah. Yeah. And do you, do you like being on production sets? Like, you know, working with a bunch of other people or do you prefer, some people prefer to just, they love shooting at home in their bedroom with their camera. And some people like really like to be on set and like to be around people and like that social aspect. No, to be honest, I love being alone most of the time, but I, I, (laughs) I, put in the work necessary for mainstream productions. Just, I just can't, I can't even explain it. I just can't let it go. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.